Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Introduction to Database Connectivity. In this video, you'll learn some basic terms related to database connectivity. We'll visualize how a Java web application connects to a database, and you'll learn about important components that we're going to need when we connect to a database with our Java MVC applications. Recall that with a web application, a client will send an HTTP request over the internet to a web server where our application will be housed. As we are working with Java MVC web applications, the request will be handled by a servlet. The servlet will use Java classes as needed from the model, and eventually execution will be passed on to the JSP, the view component, to create the HTTP response to be sent back to the client. Many times, however, our application will need to connect to a database in order to access data needed to develop the response. Databases are generally housed somewhere else. Typically, you'll have a database server. These could be from MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle's database server, IBM, Teradata, and many other companies make database servers. The database server allows us to manage and allows access to the stored database. Sometimes we need other tools. Many database servers are a little bit difficult for some to work with as they require command line interfaces. So sometimes people will acquire an additional tool, a database user interface tool such as MySQL Workbench, to actually create and manage their databases directly with the server. So if you want to work with the database outside of connecting our Java applications to them, you'll need these tools. The challenge here to discuss is how we can connect our web application to the database and database server to send commands from the application to the server and then retrieve the results from the database server back to our application where we could then process that. To do this, we need to understand a few terms. One of those is a driver. A software driver is a form of middleware. It's a small program that comes between two technologies, kind of sits in the middle. The primary purpose of a driver is to act as a translator between the two technologies. You may have heard of drivers when you're working with your home PC and your printer. As we'll see, to connect to our database, we're going to need a driver as well to be able to translate the technologies from our Java to the technology that we'll use with MySQL. In Java, we have the JDBC. The JDBC is a Java-based data access technology. We generally think of this standing for Java Database Connectivity. The JDBC provides an application programming interface, or API, for the Java programming language that defines how we may access a database with our applications. In practical terms, there's a number of classes included in the JCL, which will help us connect to a database, send commands, and work with the results. Collectively, those make up the JDBC. A large majority of the time, maybe upwards of 90%, we're going to always follow these same general steps when we're connecting to a database to do something. We will import and attach an appropriate driver to the project. I've labeled this as number zero because this is going to be done when we create our project and it'll be done one time. For each use case, for example, if we want to read from the database or create records in a database, update records or delete, we're going to have a use case for each time we want to connect to the database. Each one of these, we're going to make a connection to the database, then we'll make a prepared statement that will allow SQL commands, then we'll execute the SQL command to get some results, and then fourth we'll process the results. If you remember these general steps, you'll find that we use them throughout the example for each of the typical CRUD use cases when connecting to a database. Here's our diagram again where we see a connection between our JDBC and with ours we're going to be typically using a MySQL database server. Remember JDBC is the technology on the Java side, our application server. MySQL is the technology on the database side. In order to connect these two technologies, we're going to need something that can translate JDBC commands into MySQL commands. For that, we'll need a driver. 
drivers are very specific to the two technologies that are used. The one we'll be using is known as Connector J, and you can get that from the MySQL website. If the two technologies were something different, however, we would get a different driver. ODBC from Microsoft to MySQL, for instance. The driver that we obtain and use in our application is going to depend on which two technologies we're connecting. Keep that in mind if you ever use something else for your database or your application programming language. The zero thing we'll do is we'll obtain the driver, store that somewhere we can get to it, and we'll add that to our application. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. Once we have the driver, we need to establish the connection. The connection is the orange box shown here connecting our application to the DB server. We do that by declaring a connection. The connection class is part of the collection of classes that are used within the JDBC. Once we have the driver, we can use it to create our connection. And at that point, you can think of having a tunnel that goes from our JDBC application to the MySQL database server. Once we have that connection set up, we then need to prepare a command to send. So the next thing we'll be doing is we'll use a prepared statement object where we can add a SQL query. And this will be set up and we'll be ready to send a command. Once the prepared statement is ready, we can actually send the command and we'll receive either an object known as a result set or an int. As we'll see, the result set is what we'll get if our SQL statement is doing a read on the database. In SQL, that would typically be a select statement. If we do any other use case besides read, a create, update, or delete, we're changing the database. And in this case, there'll be a number of records that are changed. So instead of getting a result set, whenever we change the database, we're going to get an int return to our application. And the int data type, the actual value, will tell us how many records were affected by our command. In either case, we'll get a result set or an int back to our application. So the fourth thing we'll need to do is within our Java classes, or perhaps within our servlet or JSP, we're going to process those results. We'll either work through the result set to do something with the data, or we'll be able to do something with the int, perhaps make a message that says so many records were affected. As we go through the videos, we'll see all of these things happening as we create an example for each item of the CRUD acronym that we'll need to implement against our database. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.